We'll begin from Ayah 180. كتب عليكم إذا حضر أحدكم الموت Prescribed for you when death approaches any one of you is what? That in تَرَكَ خَيْرًا If he leaves behind any wealth And what is meant by wealth? A huge fortune, a great amount of wealth Then what is prescribed upon the person? الْوَصِيَّة The wasiyah Meaning he should make a will He should make a bequest for who? Lil walidain wal aqrabin for the parents and for the close relatives. How should he make the will? Bil ma'roof in the manner that is approved, and this is haqqan al muttaqin. It is mandatory upon those people who have taqwa. So we see over here that we learned about this ayah that some scholars consider this ayah to be abrogated by the ayah of mirath, which is in Surah An Nisa. The ayah of Mirath specifies the certain, the specific heirs and also their specific shares. And this ayah was revealed at the beginning. Other scholars say that no, this is not abrogated, but rather it is specific, it is maqsus to certain situations. What does that mean? That in certain situations, a person should make a will concerning what he is leaving behind. And what is that certain situation? When a person is leaving behind himself a huge fortune. And in such a situation, he shouldn't just leave his wealth for the heirs, but he should also bequest some of it to the relatives or do some other good way. Because it's a great amount of wealth. It's a huge fortune. Also, if you think about it, this ayah is also applicable in another situation where, for instance, a person is living in a non-Muslim land. And where the law of the land is that if the person dies, his property or his estate is not necessarily going to be divided according to the Islamic law. So what is he going to do? He is going to leave it to the people after he dies? No. What is he going to do? He should make a will while he is alive that when I die, my estate should be handed over to such and such person who should divided who should distribute it amongst my heirs according to the Islamic law so this ayah we see it is still applicable and especially to those people who are living in a land that is not Muslim in a land where the Islamic law is not applied because if you think about it we as individuals we still have to follow the commands of Allah especially over here Allah says it is haqqan ala al-muttaqeen it is incumbent it is mandatory it is necessary upon those people who have taqwa. And also we learn that when a person makes a wasiyah, it can be regarding his wealth, and it can also be regarding any other responsibility or any other matter that he wants to instruct his relatives about. For example, if he intends to bequest a portion of his wealth for a particular cause, then how much should it be? It should not exceed one third. Remember that. It should not exceed one third. It should be one third or preferably less than one third. And if a person leaves behind him a particular responsibility or a particular task that he was taking care of, he should also tell his family about that so that it continues after he dies. And also, a person can, in his will, he can instruct his relatives with such instructions such as when I die, I should be buried in such and such place. When I die, then don't wail, don't cry too much, don't scream, don't have certain ceremonies which are incorrect. So a person can make these instructions as well as a part of his will. And we learned from the hadith that if a person has anything that is worth bequeathing, then he should not spend two nights without having his will ready. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ بَدَّلَهُ بَعْدَ مَا سَمِعُهُ Whoever changed it after hearing it. Whoever changed what? After hearing what? بَدَّلَهُ The pronoun it over here refers to the will. It refers to the wasiyah. And the word baddala is from the root letters بَدَّلَ بَدَّلَ يُبَدِّلُ تَبْدِيلُ To change something, to alter something. 
So whoever alters the wasiya, who is going to alter the wasiya? Either it's going to be a witness who was present over there when the dying person was making his will, or it could be the trustee, the person who has been given the responsibility to execute the will. So, man badalahu, whoever changes the will. And how can the will, how can the wasiya be altered? It could be altered by addition or deletion. For example, a person wills that a particular property of his should be given in the way of Allah. And the witness says two properties. He didn't say just one property, he said two properties. So he changes the will how? By adding something to the will. Or by deleting something from the will. He says, oh, no, no, he said not 100%, only 50% of this particular house or of this particular account or whatsoever. And sometimes the deal of the will can also be done by hiding the will completely. For example, people find the will, they find it written, but what do they do? They completely conceal it. Why? Because it is in favor of someone else. It's not in their favor. They're not going to get a share. It's against their wishes. It's against their desires. Therefore, they completely hide the will. So whoever changes the will, بَعْدَ ma after سَمِعَهُ he heard it. Samira from some means to listen to something. But over here, it doesn't just mean that he heard the will. Meaning he heard the dying person make the will. But rather what it means is that he is sure, he is certain about what the will was. Because when you listen to something, when you hear something with your own ears, what happens? You're certain about it. So whoever is certain of the will, and he changes it after that. And he could be certain of the will, either by hearing it or by reading it. So in that case, if the will is altered, what's going to happen? فَإِنَّمَا Then indeed not but. And remember, إِنَّمَا gives the meaning of only. It gives the meaning of only. إِسْمُهُ The sin of it. The sin of what? The sin of changing the will is upon who? عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَهُ It is upon those people who change the will. It is not on the person who has died. The sin is on who? The people who have changed the will. It is on the heirs. It is on the people who have changed the will. We learn, Ibn Abbas, he said that the dead person's reward will be preserved for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the dying person, he says, that when I die, make sure that you don't celebrate any wrong practices after I have died. Or when I have died, then make sure that you give some of my property in the way of Allah as sadaqah to the poor and needy. So he commanded or he instructed something good to be done. So the reward for that instruction, he is going to get it. Even though that particular instruction was not carried out. The reward for the dead person's will will be preserved for him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sin is acquired by who? By those people who change the will. By those people who alter the will. Inna Allah has Samirun Arleen. Indeed, Allah is hearing and He is also knowing. What does it mean by this? That Allah has heard the will of the dying person. He heard the will. And He is Aleem, meaning He knows what action was taken by the heirs of the dying person. What did they do? Did they execute it properly or did they alter it? Now the question is, why is it forbidden to alter the will? Why? Why is it forbidden to alter the will? What happens? Injustice is done. For example, a person has instructed that a part of his wealth must be given in charity. So that haq becomes of who? It becomes of the poor people. It becomes of the needy people. And when the needy are deprived of their share, what is that? That is injustice. So it is forbidden. Why? Because it leads to injustice. And sometimes it deprives people of that which is their share, of their share. So therefore also it is forbidden. فَمَنْ خَافَ مِمُوسِنْ Then whoever feared 
from the bequeather. Now over here in the following ayah, an exception is being made. An exception to what? An exception to altering the will or changing the will that has been made by the dying person. What is that exception? That فَمَنْ خَافَ Whoever feared. Who does who refer to? Who can refer to the witness, the person who is present over there at the time that when the dying person is making his will? It can refer to the scribe. It can refer to the executor of the will, the person who has been assigned to execute the will. Similarly, it can apply to the heirs. So whoever feared, whoever was afraid, whoever was concerned, Mim Musin from the Musin. The word Musin, what does it begin with? Mim. What does that mean? It's a noun. And here in particular, it is one that is doing the action. So Musin is one who makes the, one who makes the wasiya. One who gives the wasiya. So Musin is the bequeather. The one who makes the bequest. The one who makes the testament. The one who makes the will. So whoever fears from the Musin, what does he fear from the Musin? Janafan al Isma. Partiality, a mistake, a deviation, a bias, or a sin. The word Janaf is from the root letters Jim Noon Fa. And Janaf is the opposite of Hanafa. Remember Hanif? What does Hanif mean? To incline from wrong to the right. Hanafa, to incline from wrong to the right. And Janafa is the opposite of that. What does it mean? To incline from Haq to Ghayr Haq. To incline away from the truth to that which is not true. It is also said that Janaf is unintentional mistake. It is to unintentionally become biased. It is to unintentionally deviate from that which is right. And Ithman, which is mentioned afterwards, Janafan or Ithman, Ithman is to incline away from the truth how? Intentionally, deliberately. So, whoever fears from the bequeather any kind of bias, any kind of mistake, whether it is deliberate or not. What does it mean by this? Imagine a person is dying and they're making their will. And they say, give half of my wealth in charity. What is that? Is that permissible? It's not permissible. It is incorrect. So that is what? It could be janaf, it could be ism. It could be because a person doesn't know, and it could be because a person knows, but he doesn't like his heirs, and therefore he says, give half of my wealth in charity, or give all of my wealth in charity. So imagine a person is dying, and this is the type of will that he makes. Or what he does is that he wills all of his wealth, all of his estate to one particular son and deprives his daughter. People do that. They put their entire wealth, they put their entire estate in the name of one particular heir or two particular heirs and they deprive everybody else of the share of the inheritance. So in such a case, what should be done? فَأَصْلَحَ بَيْنَهُمْ That if he made reform between them, who made reform between them? The one who is present over there. Man khafa, the one who feared. So it could be the the scribe, it could be the witness, it could be the lawyer, it could be the heir, it could be any other person who realizes that the person who is making the will, he is making a mistake. So if he makes islah between them, between who? Who does them refer to? Them refers to the two concerned parties. Who are they? First of all, the Musi, the one who is making the will. And secondly, the heirs or the beneficiaries. Those who benefit, those who get a share from the will that has been made. So if the second person, the third person, what he does is that he makes reform between the two, فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ Then there is no sin upon him. And remember that these errors, these mistakes, they may occur out of kindness of the heart, sometimes. Like a person really has a very soft corner for the poor people or he loves a particular son, and he doesn't like other children because they're very disobedient. So it could be out of the kindness of the heart, and sometimes it could be without even realize, without even thinking. 
people make such mistakes so in such a situation don't just leave him to make the decision try to reform and how is a person going to reform how is he going to make the islah first of all if the dying person if he's still alive he should tell him no what you're doing is wrong instead you should do this so first of all if the person who is making the will if he is still alive if the bequeather is still alive he should tell him of the mistake and if he has passed away then what should he do he should advise the heirs he should advise those people who are responsible for executing the will for dividing the estate but he should make islah and remember that islah has many benefits why because first of all the bequeather he will be saved from committing a sin he will be saved from committing a sin and secondly the heirs they will not have any enmity amongst themselves because the will is just and remember that if a person makes a will that is unjust there are terrible consequences for that there is a hadith that is reported in musnad abdul razzaq in which it has been said that a man might perform the works of righteous people for 70 years a person he may perform the acts the works of righteous people for 70 years he has lived a life of righteousness 70 years but when he dictates his will he commits injustice and thus his works end with the worst of his deeds the final the last deed that he does is the worst deed and he enters the fire on the other hand a man might perform the works of evil people for 70 years he lives a life of injustice of sin but then dictates a just will and thus ends with the best of his deeds and then enters paradise so just imagine if a person at the time of his death he makes a will that is unjust that is biased that deprives people of their right what is he doing he's making a huge mistake so you are benefiting from the will that he's making shouldn't you help him shouldn't you remind him in such a situation because many times in these situations people become very emotional and despite knowing what is correct they don't do it because they're overcome by their emotions so at this situation the listeners or the people who are present over there out of their sincerity and well wishing for the dying person they should remind him they should correct him and if he has died already then once they come to know of the truth they should follow the truth they should follow the laws of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's listen to the recitation kuti taught us these ahkam these exceptions he is forgiving and merciful to those people who rectify who do islah so when they do islah then what happens they're not at fault when they make the reform when they correct the situation they're not at fault because apparently it might seem oh my god they're changing the will that is wrong they're not changing the will they're doing it according to the instructions of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why in such a situation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful towards them sometimes when people are alive they distribute their estate or their property amongst their children or amongst their heirs remember that even in such a situation a person should not be biased a person should be just amongst all of his children and heirs remember that once there was a person who at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who gifted something to one of his children and his wife said that i will not accept it unless and until you ask the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if this is permissible for you to do so that you're giving only to one and not to all and he was advised by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he must be just with all of his children so even during your life if you divide your estate if you divide your property then you must be fair you must be fair with all of the children you must give equal and after the death then a person does not have any choice with regards to that it is going to be distributed according to the laws that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you will notice that in surah al-baqarah there is a lot of just a glimpse of the laws and the details that come later on because it's the introduction it's the beginning of the quran we have so many questions we're very curious okay what about this and what about that so all of these basic basic things are mentioned in surah al-baqarah and the details come afterwards and with regards to the rulings of inheritance 
and also as we learned about Qisas in this lesson. There is a book, Minhaj al-Muslim. It is by Abu Bakr Jabir al-Jazayri and it is available in English and uh, in the volume 2 there is a lot of detail on both the topics inheritance and qisas subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh